Hello everybody, welcome to Victoria 3 1.7 Sphere of Influence. We are a few updates in 1.7, but anyway, uh, I'm going to test out a nation that I think will really benefit from the new subject and overlord interactions. No, no it's not Hungary. Ignore that. I did that. That's not something that they did. We're going to start as Indian Territory. Now, I will say that I'm playing with the Better Politics mod, which I strongly recommend. And it can be a bit overwhelming at first, but don't worry, I think it's worth it and you'll adjust. I'm going to start out by researching colonization so that we can colonize the rest of Oklahoma. You have to do this pretty quickly because otherwise the US will get a claim on Oklahoma and once they do that you cannot colonize it and there's no way you can change that in the game files as far as I can find. So you don't really need to colonize Oklahoma but it's extra land and resources and I think that's definitely something you're going to be short on especially at the start of the game. Something they added in this update was the ability to ask for a state from your overlord, but I changed it a little bit so that you could one, actually ask for something, and two, it has to be one of your cultural homelands. I'll show you the values for asking for, say, Arkansas normally. Now, you can't ask for Arkansas because it's incorporated state, so I had to change it so that it's you're able to ask for an incorporated state, and then here's the values that I put in. The value just keeps going up in the AI's perspective, but I changed it so that it's instead percentage based so that, oh, a state might have like 500,000 people in it, but if you're, you know, a large country with 50 million people, that suddenly isn't so impressive. So as you can see here, even with everything lined up in my favor as far as like liberty, desire, and relations and stuff like that, I can, all, I can barely get Kansas by asking for it with an obligation. And then they immediately get a clay water. Great. One upside of asking for Kansas is that it removes the United States border with Oklahoma so they can't colonize the rest of Oklahoma unless they get all of Texas. Then they could. For my next trick, we're going to need to use another thing that was added in this update, which is support independence. We're going to improve relations with as many people as we can, try to get everybody to support our independence. Holy shit. Oh, we owe an obligation. No! Nine months. Okay. Then, when we ask for increased autonomy and the U.S. denies it, we can demand increased autonomy. Everybody will jump in. And then we can just treat it like a normal warden. Honestly, probably should ask for Louisiana here instead of revoke claim on Oklahoma. That's all I can get. Okay. Oh, they're ready to give up. Alright, let's see. Revoke claim on Oklahoma. Conquer Texas. Increase autonomy. Accidentally completed the becoming a recognized journal entry in the process. Getting them to revoke claims on stuff you have is good, but if they have a claim on any of your stuff, I'm pretty sure they'll always want to conk you, so it probably would have been better to get another state instead of getting a revoke claim on Texas. For my next move, we're going to have to backstab Mexico, declare war on them, and then invite the U.S. in promising them part of Mexico, and then they'll do all the fighting for us. Oh, God, from 80. Mexico really likes us.
unfortunately, people supporting your independence does not protect you from the US demanding you decrease your autonomy, which is a bit weird. Back for round two with Mexico, but I'm not going to go for the capital because if you do that, it pretty much destroys them, and by leaving them their capital, I can ask for war reparations several more times in the future. I am able to get everybody on my side for support independence again, but after this, they don't seem too interested. Mm, almost. Okay. Yeah, now, oh yeah, I changed its color a little bit. You know the drill by now. Even though Russia came to Mexico's aid, that did not help. The U.S. reduces our autonomy again. The U.S. flips to syndicalism, and I decide I'd really like public health care, so I start trying to pass Council Republic to trigger a civil war so we can flip the socialists. Thankfully the U.S. decides to back us, but then the socialists have a strike for some fucking reason, even though I'm trying to install them. Get some sort of better politics mod event where it triggers the syndicalists to come into power and pass a bunch of laws, and then we get a fancy custom flag and name that I made. Okay. Finally passed public health care in freaking 1919, <laughs> and then I go on to pass co-op ownership. Okay, let's see what that does. Ban collect by agriculture. So at this point, I see we can pass cosmopolitanism or no discrimination for a citizenship law, which in vanilla is pretty much impossible, but it's a lot easier and better politics. Model. After passing that, I noticed that my center of living is the second highest in the world somehow. So. I decided to make the somewhat risky move of opening the borders. This will go badly if someone else has cosmopolitanism and has a higher standard of living, but as long as we're okay on standard of living, hopefully mostly people will move in. I was absolutely not prepared economically for what would happen next. Let's go! Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, well, but that's fair. Wait, wait, to where? Oh no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Population graph literally goes straight up. Oh yeah, we had another war with Mexico, and for some reason the U.S. gave us Montana and Wyoming. What the hell? What the fuck? So that was my run as Indian Territory. I feel like I did pretty good. Definitely could have done better in a few spots, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Thanks for watching.